Now, the federal government says that there are no discussions with Western countries on establishing foreign military bases in Nigeria. In a statement, the Minister of Information and National Orientation, Mohamed Idris, says the federal government is not engaged in any discussions with Western powers regarding the establishment of military bases in Nigeria and had not received any proposals for such. The minister is urging the public to disregard false alarms while emphasizing on the government's commitment to existing foreign cooperation in addressing security challenges. In a letter dated May 3, addressed to President Bola Tinubu and National Assembly leadership, a group of Northern academics, elders and opinion leaders had urged the federal government to resist pressures from the United States and France to cite military bases in Nigeria. The letter highlighted concerns about lobbying efforts for defense agreements to station troops previously in Mali, Burkina Faso and Niger. Now joining me from Kaduna now is uh, Professor Abu Bakr Siddiq, who is the director of the Center for Democratic Development Research and Training in Zaria. Uh, good to see you again, and uh, it's been a while. Let's first of all start by talking about this letter you wrote and uh, what's the basis of your letter. How sure are you that there is a move by the government to cite these bases uh, from, uh, of the U.S. and France in Nigeria? Well, first of all, let me say that we are not northern intellectuals. We are intellectuals based in the north. For example, my center has fellows across the country and even outside Nigeria. We signed on behalf of our centers, organizations. So it's not a northern affair. It's a Nigerian affair. If you see the number of people who signed our declaration, thousands of them across the country. So it's, it is not a northern affair. The second issue I want to raise is that we are sure of our facts. Many of us have decades of research experience, 30 to 40 years of experience, a research experience. So we don't just write things lightly or we don't say things lightly. We are sure of our facts. I pity ministers who serve in illiberal democracies or in totalitarian regimes. Quite often, they don't know what takes place behind the scene. So I pity the Minister of Information. You know, I respect him, but he has to do what he's, he's been asked to do. We, before we came out, we, we had to do our research extensively in Nigeria, in Ghana, in Niger, in Mali. Luckily, Jibo and I speak French, and so we can read French documents. So we didn't write this letter lightly. And we know what has gone on in all those countries. So, but we are happy that the federal government has paid, but peddled. That is our aim. That was our objective. We are struggling to ensure that whatever is left of our political independence is not further eroded. Now that the government has come out to say that there's nothing like that, even when we know that there were moves to actually get Nigeria to sign this agreement. It's not even an agreement. If you see the document, what was uh, imposed on Niger, because there's rapport de force here involved, what was imposed on Niger, a list of demands that Niger should meet. And the same agreement was given to Ghana. Ghana is also resisting it. And they've gone to Côte d'Ivoire, you know, trying to impose it on Côte d'Ivoire. I have a series of uh, 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 write-ups by uh, Ivorian intellectuals also resisting the imposition of a uh, basis huh, in, the, in their countries. So it is not something we did lightly, but we are happy that the federal government has uh, backpedals. And this is not the first time they've done it. This is not the first time. Even under Obasanjo, you know, they had wanted to station AFRICOM there. The Minister of, uh, of External Affairs at that time, uh, uh, Dr. Ojo Madweke, was in the United States. And it, they even announced that Nigeria had agreed that the headquarters of AFRICOM would be stationed in Nigeria. In, in, eventually, those who know the implication of that, you know, convinced uh, President Obasanjo that it was not the right thing to do. 
In fact, I'm very overwhelming members of our diplomat, you know, are uh, 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 serving and retired. A diplomat at that time were opposed to it, and Nigeria uh, big paddled. In the 60s, it was the same. In fact, Britain tried to impose conditions on Nigeria before they give Nigeria independence, that we should sign a defense agreement with them. It was signed by the Balewa administration. The student of the University of Ibadan and many other Nigerian universities, actually a student, also protested against it. Nigeria, I mean, you know, British itself, you know, withdrew from it. Nigeria also abrogated it. So consistently they've tried, Western powers have tried to actually station bases in Nigeria. And Nigerians have always resisted it. And this is what has happened also this, uh, this time, you know. So there's nothing we said which we don't believe in. We believe in it. And some of them know us. They know we don't come out lightly like this. We are not the kind of people who are hired from Rita Lori uh, Hotel in Abuja to come and demonstrate or to say rubbish on television. No, we are, we are parents. We have grandchildren. We, are, we have been teaching people in Nigeria and outside Nigeria. 40 years of research experience. Uh, and Professor Sadiq, yeah, yeah. yeah. They uh, shouldn't play with us. Yeah, Professor Sadiq, let me, let me come in here. Well, the, uh, I'm excited that uh, you, you're so, so uh, sure of your of findings, and you've used the word to describe what the government has done as a, a backpedal. Uh, now, you took us down history since uh, the 60s. You said there has been an attempt. Isn't this indicative of uh, some form of good that uh, this might bring for the country or the region? No, no. The Americans have been in Nigeria since 2002. This agreement, which was abrogated recently, was signed in 2012. 2012. But the government of Nigeria did not see any progress, you know, despite the presence of American bases in Nigeria. Uh, fatalities have gone up since they were there. Uh, terrorism has not uh, uh, receded in Niger. It is on the, on the increase, not only in Niger, in Burkina Faso, in Mali. It's been on the increase. If it is in the interest of Niger, they wouldn't ask them to leave. In fact, they don't even share uh, uh, the intelligence they gather with the Nigerian uh, government. They serve American strategic interests. That is what is happening, you know, uh, what happened in, in Niger. And that is, if it has been good for Niger, they wouldn't ask them to, uh, to leave. It is not a decision I think they took lightly. And, and because the bases were there in Niger or are there in Niger, they want to dictate Nigerian foreign policy. American and the Secretary of State and the commander of AFRICOM went to Niger and told them that they had no right to actually uh, 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 engage in their foreign relations, especially with countries like Russia uh, 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 and Iran. This is, this is an independent country, for goodness sake. Will you, with us in Nigeria, accept a situation where somebody comes here to tell us that we cannot have any relationship with a, a country. It has happened before, if I've forgotten. Before Nigeria recognized uh, Angola, Kissinger came to Nigeria to tell Murtala Mohammed that we have no right to recognize Angola. Murtala asked him to bugger off. Nigeria went ahead to recognize Angola, to support Angolan uh, independence. So Nigeria has always been in the forefront of defending not only the interests of Nigeria, but the interests of Africa. Unfortunately, in the past few years, our leaders, you know, have become lackeys of foreign uh, powers. That is the issue. And if, if, if the leadership is weak, they do not address internal concerns, such as poverty, education, industrialization, they will be weak. And foreign powers can dictate to them. That is what is happening to us. Things have gone so bad in this country. It didn't start today, you know? It didn't start today. We shouldn't be follow, follow. The zombification of Nigerian foreign policy should end. That is what we want to achieve. Zombies are not soldiers only, but we can also have zombies who are in critical positions in government. They either do so, 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 what somebody at the top has asked them to do. So quickly, uh, Professor Sadiq, uh, let, let's see if we can uh, draw the curtain here. What should Nigeria be doing now? That's been, uh, well, uh, a backpedal, uh, a denier from the government on this. 
Uh, how do we put a permanent stop we're, to this? Because uh, from one administration to the other, we've seen uh, that there has been an attempt, according to your version. So what can the country do to ensure that this doesn't uh, rear its head again? Leadership is extremely important. We have to have leaders who have sense of history, who know what it takes to make Nigeria great, who knows what it takes to defend the interests defend the interest of a country. That is very important. We have to get our act together in this in this country. The kind of administration we have or governance we have in this country has to change. People should not be in government just to line their pockets. People should not be in government just to advance their, 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 their business interest. They should know that they're leaders of this country, the leaders of Nigeria, and Nigerians expect a lot from them. They shouldn't be taking orders from outside. And as I said, they will always take orders from outside if they do not have support internally. I don't want to mention a country. Take, take a country like, 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 like Iran. They have been under sanctions for over 40 years. 40 years. But what did they do? They started looking inwardly. Their institutions, their scientists, their research uh, institutions, to the extent that they started producing that which under normal circumstances they would import from outside. They are beginning to come out. They have not crumbled. I'm telling you the, san the sanctions imposed on Iran. I'm not in any way supporting Iran or any country. The sanctions imposed on Iran, if they impose on us for five years, we will, cr we will crash because of the kind of leadership we have. But I'm happy that Nigerians, you know, uh, I, I, I will come out at any time to defend their, 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 their independence. This is what this thing has showed me. Within a few hours of asking people to sign, you know, a letter to President, Oba, uh, uh, President uh, Bola Hamed Tumbu that he should backpedal, Nigeria will not accept any foreign uh, uh, basis. Hundreds of people signed across the country. I will still send it to him to, to demonstrate the fact that this is not a northern affair. It's a Nigerian affair. It's a Nigerian affair. Nigeria will not want to compromise their independence. Nigerians are proud, highly educated. But they are being run by people who are not patriotic, who are corrupt. Well, it's a fine place for us to live in, and uh, we'll still uh, wait to hear from the government on this since... Uh, uh, your team of uh, technocrats and, uh, and, uh, and academics have insisted that there was an attempt on this. Uh, I'd like to thank you for your time, uh, Professor Abu Bakr Siddiq, uh, Director, Center for Democratic Development Research and Training in Kaduna State.